This is fun. This is pure adrenaline. This is safe. All this is true when a race goes according to plan. But this is racing and things do not always go as planned. Today, racing has come a long way to protect the driver. The tracks are safer, same goes for the cars. Helmets are better, so are suits. The interior safety devices keep drivers protected and alive. But until Stand 21, a company making safety gear for race drivers, there was no unifying organization dedicated to safety. Stand 21 has changed all that with Racing Goes Safer. Racing Goes Safer is a foundation that was started by Yves Morizot and his family from Stand 21 to address the needs of racers from a safety and security point of view. It is a unique organization that is intended to try and educate racing drivers on how to safely conduct their sport. And I think it's really unique in that sense. Racing Goes Safer Foundation's mission to get information out to the racing masses about safety innovations that have come about over the last 20 years or so to make racing safer. It has to do with improving the safety and the knowledge for the racing community on best practices for everything from fire retardant clothing to seats and helmets. Very good, very good. And even the mental skills associated with the high performance environment. Eve Morisot established the nonprofit organization Racing Goes Safer in 2011 and has gathered top experts in the safety field. Dr. John Melvin, a biomechanical engineer, is the former research manager for the GM, Ford, and Dodge racing safety programs. He is also an advisor on racing crash protection for top racing organizations. My approach to uh, racing safety is. I advise manufacturers, I advise racers, I advise sanctioning bodies. Things happen for a reason. When my son's motocross career ended 18 months ago, the first person I called was Terry to find out how they could save his leg. Dr. Terry Trammell, a spinal surgeon, has spliced racers back together since Pink Floyd hit the wall and Phillips invented the compact disc. I've been in the driver repair business um, for about 35 years and I've recently shifted my focus entirely to injury prevention instead of repair. And that fits very well with the uh, mission of, of the foundation and racing goes safer to prevent injury rather than figure out how to repair them. I have never in 40 years plus had any individual from any sport or occupation visit with me and say, my goal is to be a loser. I would like to fail I'm really hoping that I come in last. Dr. Jacques Delair works with the International that. Council of Motorsport of course, Sciences we as well as the American the College of Sports yeah. Medicine. I was asked by Eve to bring to the table some of the mental skills information as a means of helping individuals to understand how to mentally control their performance so that they make fewer errors and with fewer errors it generally means fewer injuries because there are fewer crashes. What we're talking about is not trying to sell a product oh my but to sell a concept of how to protect yourself every racer needs this information and so this foundation bringing the information to the racers where they are is unique. It's at places like this, the Long Beach Grand Prix in Southern California, Racing Goes Safer can spread the gospel to drivers and racing teams interested in the latest news on motorsport safety. I'm gonna show it to you again. Watch, watch the vehicle as it gets into sixth gear, it gets a little tail wag and then it rolls. 14 times. So, this presentation that you're looking at, 
was developed with the SCTA and the crews working together to try to come back and figure out what happened in this accident. We spoke a bit about heat stress in today's symposium, mostly for people to understand that when they're developing it and what circumstances they develop it under so that they can be self-aware that potentially they're putting themselves or others in a dangerous situation by not recognizing the onset of heat stress illnesses and what to do to fix it. John Melvin always draws a crowd. Crash protection inevitably produces great video, but also video with often too much impact. Our studies taught us what is going on with the Indy cars as to why they could hit the wall at 140 G's and not be seriously injured. And it was the support surfaces. We understood about catching the head. We understood about the pelvis. Everybody's seat has a pelvis support. What we really didn't understand is the importance of the shoulder in protecting the chest from injury. It's critical. You've got to have good shoulder support. Racing 25 years ago, Everybody knew it was dangerous, and so if you got hurt, that was just the way it goes. When I was a kid, back in the 50s, I would read in the Monday newspaper how many drivers died that weekend in racing in the United States. It was just common and accepted. Uh, today's modern society does not accept a sport that kills its hero. None more than Dale Earnhardt's fatal crash in 2001 a seemingly routine hitting the wall in NASCAR. But the 45 degree angle of impact left Earnhardt with no safety measures to stop his trajectory, resulting in a deadly basal skull fracture. Earnhardt's death got everybody on board with preventable measures like the Han system, upper torso restraints in better seats, inside nets and safety barriers on the tracks. As our research has shown, the cars are quite protective if you have the right equipment to be in the cars. It's just unacceptable to have people dying of preventable deaths. But in race levels beneath the pros, we still see competing race car drivers sitting in poorly designed seats and harnesses. We even see some of them racing in streetwear apparel. That's why the Racing Ghost Safer Foundation has made it its mission to raise and bring safety awareness to all motorsports. Wearing the proper safety gear with the comfort it provides will allow for better performance. You can also perform better with an improved mindset, reaching your zone, and grasp that elusive win. And most importantly, a sharpened mindset will help prevent accidents, enabling you to celebrate with the ones closest to you. Ultimately, most of the errors that occur in the performance environment are errors of incorrect mindset as opposed to insufficient skill sets. Most of these people in this weekend of competition are highly skilled individuals, the majority of them. And yet, they often make mistakes, and those mistakes invariably, if you track back the source, it is an incorrect mindset. So very much how we think does influence how we perform. The same performance measurement is being applied to Racing Go Safer, and the safety organization is, no pun intended, on the right track. It's snowballing into a worldwide program of sharing information, getting the information out to multiple levels. And as we keep at it, we're going to see more and more people realize how valuable it is to have this information being presented to a wider and wider audience. So the real challenge for us is education. And that's the fundamental role of the foundation is to provide education of best practices and stuff that we know works and to find the different mechanisms to get it down into the development ranks so that every weekend racer on the planet ultimately gets their hands on information that can save their life. The world is motorsport, and it's a world we enjoy living in. Steering racing towards a safer path makes motorsport more enjoyable. But, just as importantly, safety will assure the sport's longevity, so we can continue to feel the adrenaline, overcome its challenges, and reap its rewards for generations to come.